good morning. This is the May 9th special compliance hearing of the New York City Board of Standards and Appeals. Uh, we have two applications today that we will be uh, hearing in tandem. The first one is 56-2BZ, 317 Don Hill Road, Brooklyn. And the second one is 1-96BZ, 600 McDonald Avenue, Brooklyn. Good morning. Stuart Klein, Klein Sloick, on behalf of the applicants. Um, I have prepared, and you have in front of uh, in front of you uh, a series of documents which we requested to bring along with us and explain uh, the current status uh, of the location. And if uh, you follow along with me, I think we could answer many most of the questions you had uh, two weeks ago. Uh, let me emphasize before we begin. It's my recollection that uh, uh, two of the, two of the, one of the members and co-counsel uh, went to meet with staff last week, and uh, they explained uh, what the circumstances were regarding the uh, the hall and how the locations operated. And I think some documents were previously submitted to you. Uh, there are duplicates here uh, in this package because I didn't know if they were widely distributed throughout uh, the board. Let me also begin by saying that uh, we are speaking about the hall, and the hall is actually the very lifeblood uh, of this uh, institution. Uh, without the hall, there is a very, very strong possibility that the Stuart School cannot substantially quite, uh, sustain itself. So I think it's most important that uh, we uh, accommodate, we, we answer all your questions, and we show you that we're operating uh, in a safe, uh, capacity, uh, recognizing the concerns of the neighbors, and uh, we have been doing that for quite some time and uh, will in fact do that going forward. Uh, so to begin, uh, the board had asked me to bring many of the members here who were uh, involved in the everyday operation of the school and the hall. Uh, we have various administrators, we have the person who runs the hall, and we have uh, members of the committee. The school is run by a committee, uh, and they serve dual roles as uh, both uh, sometimes administrators and uh, policy makers for the school. Uh, the first question we were asked is the current ownership of both locations. If you look uh, at item number one, that is the D for 600 Avenue, and item number two is the D for 317 Bay Hill Road. Uh, they are both the same owner, uh, Congregation Bells Beth Malka, which is also known as uh, the applicant Benos uh, Jerusalem uh, de Hasidic uh, Bells. Uh, and the, that is a 501c3 corporation. Just to clarify, these aren't actually, these, these are just, these are accurate. These are, these right, are, these these are, are abstract from, from abstract, right, right. from accurate, that's correct. Right. Uh, but they were printed yesterday, and what they do show is the last uh, record deed holder. <coughs> Next up is the... Wait a second. Is the temporary uh, public assembly permit issued under the signature of the Borough Commissioner, Ira Gluckman, for the period September 4th through September 22nd. Uh, I will note for the record that that's number three, and that is CC'd to the Emergency Response Team, Brooklyn North NYPD, LPPA Fire Department, who is the, uh, which is part of the agency that uh, supervises uh, all operations. Uh, next up are the plans that were submitted as part of that PA application. They were submitted by Mr. Peter of Peter Associates, who is here today. If you have any questions regarding those plans. Next up is number five, which is a fire department inspection report. Uh, issued on the opening day uh, of the 
APA uh, 9613, and I'll ask you to note on page two it says, description of the place of assembly and floor plans do not match as per section 28.117.1.1. I'll then ask you to turn to the plans that were submitted in response to that uh, notice of violation issued by the building department. Once again, Mr. Peter's plans, and they are dated September 13, 2006. Uh, so that was followed up within the week. 2016. 2016. Sorry, which one? You said 2006, it's 2016. 16, yes. Yeah. Next up is the number seven. It's the uh, TPA approval issued again by Mr. Glockman, dated October 25th, 2016, and it covers the period October 27th, 2016 to January 31st, 2017. Again, I point you to page two, which indicates this is the CC to the fire department emergency response team. Next up are the plans, dated up 20, October 21st, again, uh, done by Mr. Kinner, uh, and these are the plans that accompany uh, the commission uh, that was given for that TPA. Number eight, if you remember at uh, the November hearing. Sorry. Sure. Would you like to start again? <laughs> oh, if you really you started two minutes ago. Started. Yeah, okay, please. Number eight, uh, there was a controversy at the November hearing, if you remember, the fire department uh, was unaware that a temporary public assembly permit was issued. Sorry, Mr. Klein, if you could actually start. Start again? Yeah. Okay, surely. What okay, we have before you, uh, well, let me begin by saying that uh, all of the members of the establishment are here, from administrators to uh, parents to committee members, uh, people who control the call and who uh, run the school and here to answer any questions you may have. Uh, I put together a list of items that you look at, which I believe will answer most of the questions asked. Uh, I believe that uh, members of the synagogue, representatives of the synagogues, met with staff last week, who went over much of this stuff. Uh, some of it was submitted at that time, but I chose to uh, replicate it so that the whole board members uh, would be sure to have it. Uh, the first document, the first two documents, are the deeds, or an abstract of the deed, indicating that the both locations, 600 and 317, are owned by the congregation. And this is a an abstract of the address uh, that I printed last night, actually early this point, uh, indicating that the both owned by the same body went back to the address. The uh, third item is the TPA issued by Ira Gluckman, uh, dated September 2nd, 2016, covering the period September 4th, 2016 to September 22nd, 2016. Uh, as previously noted, this was CC to the fire department uh, by Mr. Gluckman, the emergency response team, Brooklyn Law, uh, NYPD, uh, also was sent to NYPD and the LP, uh, PA fire department. Item number four are the plans uh, executed by Mr. Kennard, who's with us today, uh, that uh, Mr. Gluckman used in order to uh, issue that TPA. The next is item number five. This is a report of a fire department inspection on September 6th, uh, indicating, as the board brought out before, that the place of assembly was at page two. Uh, the plans did not uh, conform to the permit plans. As a result of that, Mr. Pinar, the next week, submitted to Mr. Gluckman uh, new plans dated September 13th, 2016, uh, making the necessary changes to conform to the uh, fire department's uh, request. Uh, number seven is 
7 consists of two items. It is, uh, once again, a renewal on the TPA uh, dated October 25, 2016. Again, from Mr. Glockman, again forwarded to the LPCA Office of the Fire Department. And this was covering the period of time October 27, 2016 to January 31st, 2017, with Mr. Bernard's uh, plans uh, included in that, uh, in that item, uh, which were used by uh, Mr. Gluckman to issue the TPA. If you remember, there was some controversy at the November meeting where the fire department uh, expressed its concern that they hadn't been notified of what was happening and didn't know that there was a uh, TPA for the location. This is a copy of an email I sent to uh, Mr. Scaduto indicating that uh, the TPAs had previously been formed in the Central Fire Department and I included copies to them. The next item is number nine. Sorry, what did the email say? The email, uh, I had the opportunity to review the 11-15-16 public hearing take regarding the above reference matter uh, at one hour, 39 minutes, uh, what, 39 minutes. And oh, I'm sorry, it's session one uh, in one hour, 39 minutes. At the hearing, you raised concerns regarding my client's apparent failure to secure public assembly permits to the location. In response to this, please be advised of the following. And it sets out the TPA uh, issued in, on uh, October 25th. And I forward copies to him. Did, did Mr. Scudero ever respond? Did he respond? Did he respond? I believe I spoke to him at the next hearing and he had received it. Okay. The next item is a letter from the, the fire safety, the fire uh, safety fire sprinkler uh, company uh, executed on May 3rd, indicating that uh, the fire sprinkler uh, is currently performing and is fully operational and inspected. Number 10 is from the Associated Security Group indicating, once again, dated May 3rd, indicating the fire alarm system uh, is fully operational and is hooked up with a uh, fire department approved central station. The next item, again dated May 3rd, 2017, is a letter from the ISM, ISSM Protective Services indicating, and I quote, this letter is to confirm that this firm has been hired by Beth Malka School, a.k.a. Benas uh, Yisrael, the Hasid uh, Bells, to staff the premises with fire guards during all catered events. Uh, beginning September 2016, we've had a minimum of four dedicated fire guards, each with a certificate of fitness issued by the fire department at every event. We go to the next item, which is item number 12, and this is a list of all of the uh, dates when uh, affairs were done. I will report that site uh, from January uh, 1, 2017 to going through March 31st of 2018. But these are, some of them are past the expiration date of the TPA. That's correct. What, I and can you, I mean, some of the, uh, some events could be characterized, I would say, as, as school events. Mm -hmm. Some were uh, sort of outside catered weddings, or, I mean, well, it, that, it, there's no such thing as outside catered weddings, because the, the catering location is run by the school, and we have somebody here who will explain it. There is no outside Sorry, catering. that's not, I don't think. People from the outside, as opposed to high school students having, or elementary school yeah, yeah, yeah. students having parties, or it, it may be a like mix, that. but uh, yeah. uh, it, it averages approximately over the span of time, so approximately 14 events a month. And you'll notice there are certain uh, drops in the, in the amount of, uh, of events. Uh, during particular times of the year, and that coincides with the uh, various new colleges. So you have events scheduled through March of March this 31st. year? March 31st, 2018. 
Do you want us to go forward? Now, what type of events? Can you explain what these events are? These events mostly, well, I'll have, if we can wait a little while, I can yeah, have the event yeah. uh, coordinator like describe them. Yeah. Number 13 is, again, we call on Mr. Pinar. Uh This is a current plan uh, uh, of the as-builts, uh, page two shows the location of the elevator. Page three, four, and five show the path of travel from the elevator out onto the McDonald location. Uh, it goes up one flight, and then I was wrong. Uh, there's a slope that these uh, containers, their third yard uh, plastic containers, are pushed up. Uh, to exit uh, onto McDonald Avenue. Oh, uh, so, so, the, so the trash goes up the elevator, right. is carried through the lobby and the school out to that, that side yard. That's right. Through the dining room and all those and offices and past yes. the classrooms. I don't think it passes classrooms. Yeah, it does. Yes, it does. 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 Trash compactor. Well, yes. Right. If you take a look at number so. five, you'll see the refrigerated trash container, mm -hmm. eight feet by twenty feet, in the lower left-hand corner. Right, but I also see all those buses. Uh, yeah. Well, no. Yes, we you wanted a diagram of yes. the buses on site with the dimensions. Right. Correct. But so, if the trash compactor or refrigerated trash container is emptied after events within an hour or whatever that means exactly. How are the trash remover guys actually getting in there if there's buses parked? Well, I think there's ample distance between the buses and the front of this, but I'll have the facility operator to explain that. Well, and, and just, I think, uh, one of the, this, this, this kind of came up in our previous hearing, you have a, a, a building label, three-story residential building. Yes. This has been represented to us from a, by another party is a, is a community facility, is that correct? No, I, I, it's my understanding that on the left-hand side we have one commercial building. On the right-hand side, I reached out. That apparently is owned uh, by a rabbi, uh, and he uses it very infrequently. And to the best of my recollection, he put in a letter to the board in 2014 indicating that he had no problem uh, with the buses being parked there. I'll reproduce the letter to you. If you'll also notice that this is room for, for seven buses. Uh, you'll have a picture later on uh, indicating the off-site uh, bus parking on Bay Hill Road, which carries an additional uh, nine buildings. Nine, nine buses. This, this next item, number 14, are the egress calculations for each of the floors indicating Sorry, if we get back and forth, sure. because uh, there was a... What are you referring to? So the, the buses, so you counted seven. Right. And I have in my notes that at one point you had a lot for not, for parking for nine buses. Yes, I know. That'll come later in the... In the so I that's separate picture. and apart from yeah, the seven buses. Apart. That's off site. So we have a total of 16 buses. That's correct, yes. And that's the total. That's yes. all the buses the school uses. That's all the buses use, yes. In fact, I think it uses less, but there's parking for 16. The next item, number 14, and I'm sorry I'm not particularly good with the bait stamp, uh, but this is the uh, calculations for regress prepared by Mr. Kinnar, indicating that in fact uh, we have uh, more than enough egress for the uh, PPA use. Uh, remember there are two different levels of use. One is uh, 400 for uh, catered for, for affairs, 
and one is 600 uh, for use by the students. The next, the next series of items are the plans for purpose of comparison submitted by Mr. Freeman uh, of 600 for final damage, uh, date stamp uh, 128-2014. And now you'll look at it for comparison purposes. The next is a picture of the on-site refrigerated Excuse container. Can you yeah. pause one second? Um, I'm looking at the Friedman um, plans. Right. And on the cellar, you note the connection between the two buildings. This is on sheet number two. OK. And it says, cellar as per C of O. Yes. And there's a number. Yes. What C of O? indicated the connection of the two buildings. I, I, have, it, I have it with me. It was approved by the Buildings Department. Act is a uh, pass-through between the two buildings. In fact, that's noted in the 2002 uh, resolution that they were to be used in, in conjunction with each other. I don't recall that at all. Well, I have it here. I'll show you. Can you show us where it's indicated in the resolution also? Sure. I'll have it moment. Number 16 is uh, the on-site refrigerated box. Number 17 is a picture taken uh, looking towards the bus parking area. On the left-hand side is the refrigerated box. Uh, the playground area is at the forefront of the picture. It has uh, a gate separating the two. The, you want to know the use of the playground it is used by preschool children, approximately nine to uh, ten to three each day. Uh, so they are there uh, after the buses leave and before the buses come back. Number 18 is a picture of the off-site bus parking with seven buses there at the time, and we've measured in a sufficient distance to put in at least another two or three buses at that site. Uh, in front of those, those buildings. In front of those buses, I'm sorry. Number 19 is a picture taken of the front of the uh, school that was taken yesterday afternoon, indicating uh, its uh, present state is being cleaned on a daily basis. That's the day hill side. That yes. is the day hill side, yeah. And number 20 is a picture uh, the, the orient, you know, oriented to with 20 in the upper right hand corner this is a picture of the alleyway between the multiple dwellings next to us uh, and our building to show that it's uh, being maintained uh, and that is no garbage piled up in there and that was also taken this way. so with regard to the actual operation we have the the people who are responsible for that. And any questions you have, please. Let's hear about the operation, right? Or you have well, a question just to go you? back to the trash, uh, you have an event in the evening. It ends around midnight. Now, where that trash is taken through the school at that point and put in the refrigerated container? It's taken. We, we previously submitted pictures. Uh, they purchased rolling uh, rolling buckets of approximately 30 cubic yard. They're plastic, and the trash is put in there, and it's led up the elevator through the graded area out onto McDonald to be picked up by the private sanitation people. And we previously given, I will give again, uh, the uh, contract with the private sanitation people, uh, showing that they pick up within a half an hour or 45 minutes of when they're called on an active basis. And so they, talk, they come and pick up around 2 a.m.? I don't know. When did they come up and pick up? Well, around the, a little after 12. The, it closed at 12, so I would imagine it's between 12 and 1. And you said 30 cubic yards. I don't see how a 30 cubic yard container could fit through a school building. No, no, I said a, six, a, a third cubic yard. A third? I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry. Third. Third no, 30, 30 we had some difficulty. Right, yes, no, absolutely. We got the air lifted in there. So then you're saying that the amount of time that it stays in this refrigerated container is about a half an hour. Something like that, yes. 
does it ever stay for more than that? I don't know yet. Is it compacted or is it just um, refrigerated? No, it's, it's a, just a refrigerated container. In the last submission, uh, we gave you the uh, an, a, uh, items from the manufacturer's cut sheet indicating that it's sufficient to hold the storage and uh, how it operates for we more than happy to submit the cut sheet again. Right. And so there's, is it separated into perishables versus paper goods? I don't know. I think it's like all. So I, I think it's all interestables, but I'm not sure. Okay. So actually, a lot of these questions are for the people who are managing it. So why are we here from who's running this? What What would you like to ask the question? I'd like to hear actually from who's ever the highest official at the institution. Um, the one who would be considered responsible for the institution's decisions. Day, day operations, that would be the assistant administrator. Um, well, that's an assistant that assumes there's an administrator or somebody. He's here also. Okay. But the assistant. The person that everybody reports to, and if they do a bad job, they get fired. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Just to hear you from that. Good morning. Which I'm administering since April 1924. So what what's it actually mean? So you said you're the administrator? Yes. What's it mean to be the administrator? Administrator, the time when I took it, you know, like the third book we have today. So I have everything in my own. As it was growing and growing, we took assistance and help. They are running the daily operations and try to see that they're doing it properly. Okay, and when you say it, what do you mean by that? Doing what properly? Each department, each facility, like you have the school running, the education, and then you have the uh, transportation, and you have the catering part. Mm -hmm. Each part on its own. So, um, so then you hire the people who are going to be managing the school? Correct. Okay. And then you hire the people who are going to be managing the catering? Yes. So with respect to the catering, um, when did that start? That started uh, since we were about 10 years ago. Nine years ago. Okay. And it started in the 90s? No, we finished. No, I think we got to the 2002. When did you finish the building? When you finished the day hill building. Which uh, 2010. Hmm? That's when we got to finalize the So The day hill was finished in 2010? Yes. And yeah. yeah, the final CBO, I think, was issued sometime around. Yes. Right. The variance was granted in 2002. 2002. The yes. building was finished in 2010. So you're saying you're only operating the catering since around 2010? Correct. Um, I have this certificate of occupancy. Right, that doesn't, yeah, that doesn't tell you when it's been operating since. That just tells you you have a certificate of occupancy. For what, by the way? A uh, certificate of occupancy is dated 8-11-2011, and it is for uh, conjunctive use of cellar in an additional building with a uh, appropriate floor load and maximum persons cellar 600 uh, first floor 150 second floor 300 third floor 300 fourth floor 200 uh, roof 70. What are the use groups? Uh, the use groups are all three. Good. So I know it's a little arcane but three is for a school right and you're aware that your approvals are for a school. Is that for Dayhill or for McDonald's? This is for Dayhill. And just to, to answer a question that was previously asked by Commissioner Martinez, uh, I, I'm looking at uh, 5602 uh, BC, and it indicates, whereas the applicant states that although the two portions of the school can remain separate buildings under the administrative code and the zoning resolution, an access way would be created between the buildings so that the institution could function more efficiently. And that was part of the plans approved by the building okay. The reason we're asking is because 
about two years ago, I would say, um, we had testimony before this agency that the two buildings were not connected, were not related to each other. So, um, yeah. That, that would be plain wrong. That well, would be wrong. And plans were something that did not show any connection. Correct. This is the first time I've actually seen the actual connection. Yeah. They might, have, you know, they might have been submitted by Mr. Friedman showing the connection, but they weren't approved with a connection. Right. And, and they weren't represented at with a connection. Um, okay. So, and, and in terms of, so, so you start, you said you started the catering in 2010. Um, who, who's the, what, is, what do you do with this catering? Who handles the catering? That's a good thing. I mean, the school's supervision. <laughs> Mr. Schwartz, we gave it this green of you. What do you mean it's under the... Mr. Mr. Klein, he's the one that's handling the thing. He's the coordinating the whole thing. Okay. What do you mean it's under the school supervision? It's, it's like for community, right? So everything is under our... from, from us and to us. It ends up in our... in our... Uh, in your pockets. Right? So, so how do you find the people, how do people find you to have these parts? This is what we get to answer okay. that, Mr. So you don't, you don't actually know that? I'm with the bedding safe, Mr. Gordon, and open. Okay. Do other people have questions? Okay. Um, but uh, since you're the administrator, um, you must have been involved in the, uh, the Board of Standards and Appeals your applications, right? When, when the initial approvals were granted for a school, right? And um, you're aware that they were granted for a school. That is, with children in it who go to school, and that's what they do, right? And it was never granted for a catering facility. You're aware of that. This is part of our help for the community for the parents of these kids. But you're aware that it was never granted for a catering facility. It's not, it's not catering to make business, like to make money on it. We just want to help out the people as that business. Do you, do you charge for the catering? The cost charge. Do you charge more than the cost of just supplying the food? No. We try to keep it on the low end to help out the, uh, our people. Mm -hmm. To cover the expenses as is cover the mortgages. So you're saying you're just covering your expenses? That's it. But you're aware, if it, I'm still asking the question, I need an answer. You're I aware. Mention, let me tell you, I had many times that the neighbors used to come in and wanted to take it, and I would have a talk to them. I'm sorry, say that again? A lot of neighbors which used to come in that they want to rent it out for their Okay. It's um, limited to people in the country. Um, but again, I'm going to ask it again, and I want a straight answer, yes or no. Were you aware that this was an approval for a school? Yes. And that there was not an approval for a catering? Yes. Okay, thank you. And then let's talk to the cave, the person who manages sure. the cave. Good morning, everybody. Okay, could you tell us about how you operate this catering? The direct From the very the beginning, way, what do you do? The way it works is that people work, know us good, and they call us up. Mostly students of the school, mostly. Uh, they graduate school, they know the place. It's a community, it's one community which we have about. 1,500,000 congregate in our community, which is called Bells, um, large, community, large congregation. That's called the girls' school separately, there's boys' school, there's high schools separately in Brooklyn. And when we originally started, we were just low, just the girls' schools, and the word went out for some people in the neighborhood that do, you know, very economical weddings for people today in the way we're we know it's really not affordable to make weddings, but I think, I didn't check it out, but I think 
it's the most affordable wedding in Brooklyn, most likely. I'm not going to, but there are about 12 or 15 wedding halls, 10 wedding halls in Brooklyn in, in our neighborhood. It's the most affordable place because we know our community cannot handle the, the cost. These girls don't go to work, they don't have any jobs, marry themselves off, they finish school by 17, something like that, by 18 they get engaged, that's the way it works, and especially the boys finish school and they get married. So now this is part where we came into the community, that's originally why it was made for, again for the community, plus for the school, the revenue, which helps out a lot of school, I understand, I'm not involved in exactly how the management and the, the business part works, but I understand it helps out the school. And we have people calling us for dates, and people are engaged a long period of time ahead of, ahead of time, because number one is there's no affordable holes they can get married, so they have, they, they are pushed off for, even if they want to get married in three months, some people want to get married, there's no way, because the demand is so big, and the price so good that this, this is what happens over here in our particular place. Some other places, definitely you can find a place to get married probably in two months from now. But this is not the case over here. So we are getting booked, you know, quite a lot, you know, where we are. The job is done right, the people are nice, the place is nice. Uh, that's basically how it works. People come in, they book a hall, they pay a minimum fee for you know deposits, and then after some slowly payments, they get till the wedding. So right after the wedding, they just slow payments, and they're getting married and they're happy. And you know, again, we only try and get to do something for the community. We are only here, like you said, like from 2010, maybe 2009. I don't remember the days when we started. We are the most, I mean, say most for our community the most reasonable place to get married and the most elegant, not elegant, say, get the money's work. And people are, are just asking for our help. Basically, they're down to us asking for our help to just, 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 just do the right thing. And we're getting phone calls to counsel. You guys are doing the best thing that you can do. There's nobody's going to find this crisis in Brooklyn. In our nation, again, Brooklyn's huge. Uh, in our circle, probably holds like a 10 or 12 wedding halls, I don't know how many. None of them are competing with the service, with the food, with the price. That's the way it works. I have a question. Um, I'm looking at the June 2017 schedule. So those um, events that are uh, scheduled during the weekdays, mm -hmm. what time are they offering? Usually weekday wedding starts 6 30. And the six. school ends? School ends 5. 15, 5, 15. 5.15 and the, and the buses? The buses take home the girls and, and, and they leave 5.15 or 5.30 and they go to their parking lot, wherever they, uh, the station. So you don't have any after school pro programs? It's about 5.15 after school programs. I remember good. I'm not involved in the daily right. It's about 5.15 or 5, something like that. Mm -hmm. These girls start at 8, 8.30 in the morning. So, in terms of the um, fire safety, so the fire safety officer from the fire department um, is extremely upset because there were agreements that were made that the fire safety people that you bring in are supposed to file reports and contact the fire department when these events are occurring, and that hasn't been happening. And so. I'm sorry, Andrew, I, mean, I apologize. I, I, I don't know when that agreement was struck. It, it, to the best of my knowledge, it was not, it was not in writing. Uh, the TPA. No, certainly, our, you wouldn't want to put any of this stuff in writing. This is an illegal use. Well, so none of this should be in But, but I, I'm not going to argue the legalities of use. We're not here for that. It, it, uh, it is, in fact, a non-compliant use. The building was approved to be a school the ground, those uses are shown on the crew drawings not to be used for a catering facility, whatever kind of word mincing that you want to use. We constantly have applications before us where we can tell that an auditorium is going to be used for a catering facility. We make, we stipulate clearly that this is not to be used for this, that it's a school, these are auditorium spaces, 
these are dining rooms for the children, right? I, I, so it's currently in illegal use, and there isn't any way around that one okay. because it's not approved by the Board of Standards and Appeals for this use. So I don't want to have any more of that I, 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 citing I, I, to case law. I, I, I don't want to argue that. Okay. I mean, what I do as an attorney is I do argue case law. And, and I, I'm only addressing the issue of whether or not there was this compact between the fire department and the, the, and, and the, the catering people. I don't know if that exists. Well, All I know is, is that the TPAs that were issued by Mr. Brooks, by Mr. Gluckman, were forwarded to the fire department, and it was confirmed by Mr. Scaduta that that's in, 2000, that's in 2016. We're talking right. now about an expired TPA since right. January, giving you no authority to have any of these events there. And in addition, the fire department did meet with whoever they met with the school and worked out something. And it isn't, maybe it's not in writing, it's unlikely that it's in writing. And it hasn't been followed through. And hence, the fire department was extremely upset, as you can see, at the last hearing, mm -hmm. um, well, and doesn't believe that this should be operating. The fire department has been there repeatedly. The building department has been there repeatedly. I, I when we repeatedly, just, well, just like, feel free just like, to like excuse me, I, I respectfully yeah. remind the board that in the November hearing, Mr. Scaduto was unaware at that time that the TPA was issued, despite the fact that it was sent to the fire department and it was later confirmed. Okay. So, so, so they, they were aware. Ago. They were aware that well, what was going on. However, when you read the TPA, right. when I read the TPA, it's telling me that every time you're going to have an event, the architect and rector has to go and inspect the premises and sign off that um, certain the egress and the emergency lighting and the um, general lighting. And he is, he is here today. Yeah. Right. He is here we'll today. do that prior to the event, which in my opinion is every event. And then that inspection will be faxed. I believe it's faxed to the fire department. That's condition number six on uh, September. It's repeated in all the TPA. Yeah. Right. TPA, uh, Certified to the fire department that the site is in conformance. So can you produce any of the faxed letters that you generated prior to each event? Addressing the comment to me? Uh, addressing the, the, the TPA. The fire department contacts me when they're coming and they came to inspect the premises no, prior no, to the event. That's not no, it's the event. Event. no, I go there and I meet with them and address whatever concerns they may have. But they didn't write it as a report. They gave me, I do have phone logs of that event, that they contact me. Either I go or someone from my office well, goes and meets with them and assures them that the place is well lit, that the egress is clear, that all of the functionality of a temporary PA for the time period and for the event period is met. They don't come on every event. That's not No, what I'm talking about you coming. They don't come, yeah. but you go no, or someone. you send someone for each event mm -hmm. and you do the inspection yes. and you fa either fax or mail to the fire department the results of the site visit. They've never asked me to do that. It's in the TPA. But the department has never asked me to do it, but I can. That's not fire department. It's, 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 it's the building. Right. So can you produce those yes. letters yeah. for the past? So you've done it for each event. Yes, Pardon me? Say your name. Lawrence Pinner from Pinner Architecture. How, how long have you been involved in this project? I was the architect that filed the approved plans for date. I was not involved with the town plan and construction, but I was involved with the date of the project. Okay, and have you been involved since then on this project? No. So no. you were brought back in when? I was asked to uh, apply for the temporary public assembly permits, and since I did the initial public assembly, and I have a great deal of familiarity with the school and with the hall, I uh, represented them with Mr. Bluffton to obtain the temporary public assemblies. And the first one was in September of 2016? I believe so. 
So just to clarify, the, the, the catering facility has been operating since about 2009-2010? I'm going to clarify about the fire inspections and then you started asking me if I was interrupted. I could only say the place is in safety, safety, all the fire alarms we check every day, fire is connected like I mentioned. Each and every day we have four fire guards waiting, doing their job in each and every event. It didn't matter what it was, how it was, how many people, and, you know, school event, anything, it was 100% safety. We are not here, absolutely not here. Just make me get angry somebody, we are here. We are the community, we're trying to do our best. And we are absolutely here to hear anything what the council have to say. And we never ever missed a fire safety at all, not even not even a, a needle point to say that God forbid something was said. Everything 100%, all the fire alarm, like you said, the fire alarm is connected to fire to uh, the company, the minimum thing, the fire department is there. The building department, I went through the building department myself, they came down, it's not mentioned in the records, I don't know why, they came down, it was approximately, um, like I said, I'd say three months ago, something like that they came in, inspected the building department, he walked around, they did every, all the inspections, everything was no violation, everything was fine. I personally walked around with the fire department, everything was fine with DPA. As far as the connecting over here between the fire department and sending the paperwork, that may be a mis something, a misunderstanding, but again, we ask, we're here for the community, and we never ever did anything that may, may involve any fire safety for any any person or persons involving these these affairs. But you didn't ever have until September of 2016 a PA permit for 600 for 400 people after 5 p.m. They do have a public a assembly. assembly current public assembly for 600 people, which is a current public assembly for 600, which is listed as a catering hall, meeting hall, and that's a current public assembly. The temporary public assembly was reduced to 400 people for wedding events. And why do you think that is? Like, why did they reduce it down to 400 from 600? It was the maximum number of people they asked for, they asked me for, we could have obtained a temporary public assembly for a wedding for 600 persons, which is the maximum capacity of the hall. However, they only requested a temporary PA for 400. They could have requested any number from 600. Well, what I need to say is why, if you already have a PA permit that you for the students, why do you think you needed a separate PA for this facility? This I believe they were instructed during the course of the operation. Right, but there might be a reason why. Uh, what's the well, because reason? the I, yeah. I suspect the board believes that it needed the commission from the buildings department to run uh, the the wedding events. So it was done as a, re as a reaction to uh, the board's entreaties. But other than that, uh, I don't know why it was done. I I, I personally don't. The reason that may be that it's just to try to keep the community, it may be the reason. Say try, again? I say the reason for 400 is maybe because we try to keep the community in a lower, lower crowd. The people may have been because these, these people are really, really low crowd, low, you know, people that uh, are trying to, to get the, the, the least price as possible. So that could be the 400. That's where the 400 comes from. You know? So how do, how do you use the entrance for when you go down there? Grand staircase. You know, the entrance before you go down into the cellar for the so all the sit down. Are, all the entrances are open coming in. There's men entrance, there's women entrance. There's separate facilities. No, they enter but then they're in that area. Mm -hmm. How is that area used? That's a much bigger area than the dining room. Just, just for walking down, you know, sometimes people find themselves walking. It's just a lobby area. Which, which is, you know, so you don't have actual events there? No. No Only photo? The photographers don't take oh. advantage of that? And people well, come there? Probably do pictures with from the bride. And, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you don't start off the event no. there? No. 
there's like a on the side is like a men's men's section that they, they, they before they sign the paperwork for, for the product that there's like a small ceremony to sit down and it's like they muzzled up and you know that that is done with the men's section yes, that is done with the section. does that area have a public assembly permit upstairs, upstairs. upstairs. Does it? It does not, and I don't believe it needs one as a, uh, a matter of the public assembly. It's less than 75 people ever congregating in that area. As they enter, they enter and they go down. That area can't even hold more than that number of people. Therefore, it not be required to have one. Why, why couldn't it hold more than 75 people? This is, this is the, the it's talking area? about the lobbies. I'm making a grand, yeah, grand staircase that goes down. Hold on. I, the, the, your plans say 372 persons. Yeah. So right. <laughs> On the which plan are you looking at? Uh, oh. Six. Moshe Freeman. Yeah. Freeman set. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, he's made uh, the documents. Six. Base stamp fifteen. Yeah, this, these are the ones you can buy. Let's look. Let me. I'm not familiar with these. Oh, okay. So you're not really that oh, the architect of this building. Uh, no, I'm not. It's and I see record. that. Number. Yeah, page three. Yeah, page three of, of your plan. Yeah. Oh. So the, the, these are the travel path. Oh, I see. But she just. Um, I, I have a question. Go ahead. If, if you look at the department of buildings, if, if you look at the department of buildings engineering and emergency operations inspection from July 19, 2016. The inspector made reference to a PA for 1,679 people who were unable to determine what area it was for. This is their inspection of 600 McDonald Avenue. Do you know what area that covers? Does it cover the entire school or for Camara? It must be the entire school. And just see if all the would allow for that number of something that you These tables are the same tables you use for the lunchroom for the high school during the day? Yes. So you don't take them down? No. And how many students do you have in the high school? Approximately three. Approximately three. Three hundred? Seventy-five. I'm not familiar with exact numbers. So, and how many in the elementary school? Uh, we have like eight hundred, something like that. Five hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, uh, to clarify, uh, so all these PAs are for, and, uh, for 317 Day Hill, but you've only provided a comparison <coughs> of the approved versus existing for 600 McDonald today. Is that right? That's correct. So, has there been no change in the Day Hill configuration? We know there have been changes have been. in McDonald, but we don't know. Right? There. That was one of the questions, yeah. right? Because the approved right. plans say no catering. Right, and we don't know about the side. The commercial kitchen actually is in the cellar of McDonald's. It's oh, yeah. right, McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, that's all. And in the original DSA group plans, there is a connection between the two buildings. Uh, on the day bill. On the day bill. Yeah, yeah, it just, uh, it just the, the, the yeah. You know, we've had a lot of, um, you can say mistakes, but we've had a lot of statements at these hearings that turn out not to be the case, um, which is decidedly not okay. <laughs> we, we were told that there was no catering going on, in so many words, um, at the McDonald Avenue. It, and when asked several times, the representative said there is no catering going on. So, um, one of the reasons that we're having this hearing is because, uh, and now I'm speaking to the owners of the school, right, and the administrators of the school, 
your representatives have come before this agency and misrepresented frequently what's going on in the school. And the way that we've been able to find out what's going on is literally by going to the internet and Googling stuff. And there's a lot of information on the internet. So, um, but, so let's just say that's not a great way to develop a good relationship with the board where your representatives get up there and misrepresent and then the next time when you're caught in the act they say, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. So um, I would suggest that in future that you, one of your group, whoever, the administrator, attends the hearings and corrects the misrepresentations from your council and your other representatives because it's not funny to misrepresent before a government agency, okay? So, yeah, please. I didn't interrupt this, but I have to say that since 1954, he meant to say he was born in 1954. Right? <laughs> and I will say by that meeting in 1993, I think it's fast. I was here in August, I guess more than a year ago, mm -hmm. with the parent and my mom too. I was here then when somebody said there's no catering. I felt and I'm burying myself. I told him later, who asked you to say a lie? I'm ashamed of it till now. So I didn't jump up before telling him, hey, I'm only born in 1954, you're not the administrator from 1954. And I felt like it's disrespectful to everybody then just to jump in and say. Okay, I appreciate that. Maybe you should be the one who comes and gives testimony. <laughs> I, can only tell you what, I can only tell you what I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so there's a so in the realm of these things, since I'm telling you, we learn a lot from the internet. The internet actually shows uh, weddings that took place before 2010. Maybe the internet's wrong, right? We learn how much we, we made. fake news, et cetera, et cetera. No. I need something, a documentation that shows when the catering started. Because it's kind of like, we don't know what to believe anymore because we find out everything from the internet, right? The other thing I found out from the internet is that there's this really great blog where you can write and say, where is a great place to hold a wedding? And on this one blog, everybody's talking about all the different places where you can hold a wedding. And hands down, it's not Mordecai is the best deal, beautiful place. I recommend it highly. And they hold 400 to 500 people, depending on who is answering them. Right? So that's contrary to the statements that you're making, that this is only open to members of the congregation, because that's a general open internet ask, um, in addition to which we've seen photographs of people who are clearly not members of the congregation having an event there. So that makes me a little concerned about those statements. Um, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm putting that out there <laughs> because, again, we don't have a good history with the institution being honest with us. Um, in addition to which, everyone seems to be ignoring the fact that the temporary public assembly permit, which is required by the city, expired in January, right? And everyone is just saying, Never mind. We're no, well, actually, no. Not. Let, let, let me just. It is expired. Let, Isn't it, it expired? There's no question about that, but I think you okay. need some. So if that has to be put in greater context. Uh, the application for a TPA to extend beyond January 31st uh, was submitted. It was approved by one, if not two, levels of plans examiners. All of these things then go to the borough commissioner. And for some inexplicable reason, he would not offer why. Uh, Mr. Gluckman decided that despite the history of TPA being granted by him, he would not go forward with that. So the application was made. Uh, he simply said, I'm sorry, I will not sign it this time. He was asked a number on a number of occasions why that is. He refused to give an answer. He simply suggested that we put in uh, an appeal, uh, a ZRD1. The ZRD1 was denied. Uh, I'm following up on the appeal on that. 
but I, I just don't want it to be <coughs> hanging out there that uh, we cavalierly went forward once it was uh, once it expired and we didn't do anything. That was not the case. What else is so? I also get involved in giving lots of parties for the organizations that I'm involved in, and we need a TPA permit in order to have a party, right? We need insurance. We need all that sort of stuff. When we don't get the TPA permit. We don't have the party. I appreciate that, but right? we do have We can't, because it's illegal to have the party. Yes, however, we do have an ongoing PA permit, and the only reason we went for the PPA was we were asked to get a separate PPA for the party by the, the weddings at a lower number. I was not part of the, the submission then. I don't know why it was done, but there is a current uh, yeah, public assembly permit for 600 people. As a matter of fact, uh, if I recollect properly, uh, the denial of the last uh, TPA, uh, in the denial of the last TPA, uh, the borough commissioner said, you know, you can have any other events you want associated with the, this, the, the school. Uh, he left it kind of open ended. But, but there is, we can legally occupy the that place means, for 600. That means children having events not outsiders coming in or not students you know once you graduate you're not a student anymore that makes you an alum that's correct and so these aren't parties for students if anything if it's true and it's not available if i were to do you know make a phone call to the general public um it's still not students who are getting married in these places it's alumni those are not the same things as students right and alumni Okay, well, different thing than if you're well, there could be different I, I requirements. Could, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I said there could be different requirements from the building department and the fire department regarding having a major 400 person event versus having, you know, children in the lunch. To the best of my understanding, mm -hmm. there would not be a, and Mr. Penner didn't mm -hmm. speak to that issue, but, but, and, and to tell you the only way I, as an attorney representing the applicant, can, can address that is by reaching back to, to the law and, and you don't want to hear that right no because that's the argument you're making to the building department it's really not relevant to us what i know is relevant is you've got an illegal use in the building and you have to cure it and you have to operate this with fire department approval and if the fire department is panicked about it which they were at the last hearing where they said as we're talking about parking and by the way we still need to talk about parking they said why are we talking about parking they shouldn't even be in the building and, and it's my my belief and i believe the architect shares that with me that the fire department was fully aware of what's going on and just like his prior uh, disposition before the board in november uh mr scudito was wrong it's as simple as that and and we can argue but the fact of the matter is the place is safe i submitted letters indicating that we have a fully functioning fire okay. system so but it's not once again, we're not the one who determines the safe fire legals, department decides i appreciate that, that. But, with, but but once again I, I believe that his response was was inaccurate and grossly out of proportion with whatever you know he insult he felt the fire department received but with regard to going forward and legalizing this place pursuant to the board's position uh, mr rothbrook is here and he could possibly that let's talk about the parking okay parking it was my understanding that in a meeting last week with staff uh the the school had committed to suspend the valley parking and have uh, two people in front of the building uh, as what happens with, with the Vishnitz and what happens with the Shader on the Donald Avenue, have two people in front of the building making sure that uh, uh, that there was no congestion in front of the building and the cars uh, dropping off people were going to be uh, dropped, they were going to be dropping them off and uh, immediately chasing them away from the That doesn't solve the problem. It makes yeah. it worse. Sorry. No, no, no. no. Okay. It makes it worse. <coughs> what we were just told by the neighbor in testimony was that he cannot park his own car in his neighborhood until 11 o'clock at night when people start to leave, right? Well, that's rather the fascinating. Reason, because that individual wait, let me, actually let me finish. Holds a, has a garage. So I don't know how that's possible. We had testimony from neighbors who said there's problems parking in the neighborhood, and it just makes sense. If you've got a party for 400 people, 
who are mostly arriving by car because they're dressed very fancily, right? So they have 200 cars for a specific program. Some yeah. figure 200 cars. It might probably even more because there's also the band and there's also all the other people who come, the photographer who has to come with the car, et cetera, et cetera. All of those people are parking in the neighborhood. The whole point of the valet parking and getting it off the street is because you have to take it out of the street system. Again, I repeat, your, your use is not a permitted use. Your use is a nuisance to the neighborhood. The, the trash was the first part of the nuisance we tried to deal with. The buses, which are connected to the school but really shouldn't have been causing a nuisance in the neighborhood. And the parking is a nuisance in the neighborhood. It's not an option. You have to do it. You have to find a place okay, to put the cars. First of all, the buses, I believe, is not an issue now. With regard to parking, I know you had first said that 40 cars are required in the zoning resolution. Then, in the course of the, of the, of the meeting, you, you went to 43. Uh, my clients no, I just because I did the math, I yeah. improved on the math, yeah, okay. so I went to 43. Well, I, I did the math. Okay. It doesn't matter. Uh, but 43, it doesn't. It's only, uh, you know, 25% yeah. uh, of the need. But let, let me just take this in order. And with regard to the buses, they responded to your concerns. Uh, they well, let's are, not talk about the buses okay. anymore. We're talking about the parking. They, they are the committed to uh, go out and get uh, off-site parking for the number of cars you spoke about, the number of cars uh, that you want. Uh, they're in the process of doing that, but it is not a quick fix. We're doing it as quickly as possible. I only mention the buses to show good faith because they went out and that parking lot for the buses is costing $72,000 a year. So they are committed to correct the problems. So, they will, they will, in equal measure, they will address the car situation. They're doing that now. So let's be clear. Sure. The catering is not a permitted use. And if it costs money to operate an, an, an organization or whatever, a business, effectively, a business, that makes money for the school, it's going to cost money to operate the business and the parking lot is part of the operation. We appreciate that. Independent of the fact that this is a total illegal use, I am going to repeat that over and over in the record because, and that the school knows that they shouldn't be doing, knew at the time that they started and knows today that this is not a permitted use according to the approved plans the zoning district in which the building is located, et cetera, if I left anything out. <laughs> yeah. well, no, I, I, you've raised all the points, and I, I think uh, what I'm struggling is when you go back to the permit that was granted, fine, the capacity was for 600, but the analysis that was done for secret purposes and everything did not factor in an event space, it factored in the crowd that would be generated from a school. So the whole traffic that had impact, if there would have been a catering, was not at all analyzed. Well, so don't interrupt. <coughs> so I, I, we definitely are seeing a situation where a project is occurring without a due analysis that was done for the use that it was considering. And that needs to be corrected. Okay, I, I, I appreciate that. I apologize for, for interrupting. But the fact of the matter is, this was originally put in uh, by Fishbein Video in 2002, and it was put in as a programmatic needs case. And the board is fully aware that under the programmatic needs case, under uh, the Cornell case, uh, the, uh, the environmental or the sea finding uh, is, uh, the standard is very, very high. So I doubt very much it would have had any impact uh, on the, the finding itself, uh, but Certainly, if the board requires we look into that. What? For for what? seeker purposes, though, that the that is about public disclosure and information yeah. to the board, and so having the full analysis done it is is uh, you know a, a requirement, and you know the the agency at the time made a decision to issue a neg deck mm -hmm. based on information that was provided and that information does not reflect what what is apparent. and, and would be more than so that's, that's a very and, and we often have requests for i'm sorry i would just say that actually 
what what should happen is that should be part of your analysis. Right. The city plan should go through that. Right. But we're we're interested in involving. And then we would like to do it one after and leave, so it doesn't have to wait for that period of time. We yeah. could do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. I don't want to. I mean, that period of time be. We fully expect the city planning application to be moving forward shortly. We had our uh, interdivisional meeting at the end of April. We're waiting for their comments back, uh, at which point the process will start with developing the reasonable worst case scenario, which for secret purposes will address the uh, uh, banquet hall use of the cellar. So uh, that would that should be happening within the, within the next two months probably. Adam Roth through. And and after the two months, what happens? Well, we start the process of uh, the secret process at city planning. Uh, starts with uh, developing a, a reasonable worst case development scenario, addressing what the use of this space is. What our our application is to add a commercial overlay, uh, which will make the uh, banquet hall a uh, conforming use. Uh, <coughs> So the uh, uh, secret analysis will address that, and uh, uh, again, whatever whatever requirements they have to address uh, again any of the issues that city planning addresses during the full secret analysis, will be, uh, that process will start. Right, that's just a secret. Well, the rezoning is moving forward at the same time. So the secret the city planning applications moves actually moves forward on kind of two different fronts, the zoning part of it uh, moves forward through technical review as well as the CEQA is moving on a parallel course at the same uh, at the same time. So I have a question. Um, once it's rezoned, um, um, there will be a parking requirement for the right. I, I don't think there will be a parking requirement. This is cellar space. Uh, it's exempt space from uh, floor area. So. Could I put any commercial use below grade dusk at that So I think just retail use itself. That's really city planning and call. And by the way, they could impose a parking requirement, especially in the standard well, not under, use. Not under a rezoning. It's all whatever. Right. I was just trying to get to the reason. Did it require well, parking? And yeah. if you're going to waive it, well, I would, then it become a PSA. I, I would also point out. I would also point out that uh, whatever relief we get from city planning, we still need. They are not negating or validating or making moot the BSA approvals that we have. So, at the end of the day, uh, this is still subject to BSA review. We've heard the BSA opinion on uh, parking, whether or not that uh, opinion changes uh, based on it being a zoning requirement or just a. Uh, 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 the board's consideration under the other findings for variances is, is something that will be discussed again uh, until we know what city planning's position is or where we're at with that. It's it's uh, premature, but uh, the, the both buildings will still be subject to uh, the BSA's jurisdiction. So, okay. so in terms of yeah. Can I finish up like to interrupt my friend, Mr. Schwartz? <laughs> about the parking, I'm there a lot of times, daytime, and I come to Wedges at night. I never get my car. And I just spoke to Mr. Pearlstein for the mayor Blouse who's coming down next week with the council in Greenville to, pre to address the problems of the neighborhood. I told him right away, parking. Parking, that's the main issue. It's not only there, it's all over. I don't recommend you to come back home. I would like to explain how our community works. It's not just school. It starts when the child is born. From helping the parents place the other kids they have by other community members, by they making the party, there are people that can cook for free for cost price, okay? and they can deliver if it's in the synagogue, if it's a girl, if it's Saturday morning, if it's a boy, it's Saturday night, the party and so on, and that goes on until we die. The community, it's our community, 1,500 people, families, plus. Plus, which I mean is that my son was a friend that he used to work with. Uh, had a bad accident two, two weeks ago, he made a party, 
this week, nobody else. And he raised a lot of money to help the family. Now it's not only that soccer community where the boy belongs, but I went and everybody went. It's just not because we're 1,500 people, we block out other people. Especially in school, we have girls from other communities which don't have any schools. If this girl comes in, it's automatically, it's a wedding, she'll get it. She'll get it on a discounted price, like I got it when I married my kids. And I got a discount. And you know what else? I also got it since they opened the door, they were able to make a discount on the tuition as well. Somehow they managed to help me with tuition as well. And I guess it's for many other people who couldn't afford Sorry, how can you qualify? Work who qualifies for a discount? If you come in and you explain, you show that you don't have the means to pay. Okay. So anybody can make it. Yeah, they, they, they take you for the right. No, they, okay. they take you for, they tell you, you're going to cut this. You're not going to do a smorgasbord. If, you yeah. wanna, if yes. you're going to stand up and show that you're willing to cut from yourself, mm -hmm. you're going to cut from ourselves. That's mm -hmm. how it works. Okay. And we'd like them to do okay. this. And the community is not only school. It's, it's connected forever yes. until you die. But with all due respect, yes. Every, uh, let's say, religious institution and many other kinds of institutions have that same kind of relationship, right? You start with your family wants you to be part of this thing since you're a little kid, and you stay with it, and they're involved in your wedding life and in your other life and all that. And according to that, all of those not-for-profits, whether I could even exaggerate this and talk about a museum. I've been going to the same museum since I was a little kid. According to that, they should have a care facility in the museum, even though it's in a residential neighborhood, and rent it out to the public who, who, because we're all like one. So the fact is, care facility is a commercial use. And it's, it, it, when you're saying it's related to the students, they're not students anymore, they graduated. That's just the, that's just fact, right? And I appreciate that there, you know, feel this camaraderie and the alma mater and all that stuff we all do about our schools where we graduated from, but that doesn't make them now entitled to a payer facility. So, um, anyway. I appreciate you. Thank you. If I can answer you like a lawyer, I don't know the laws. It was my dream for many years, but unfortunately I didn't make it. My kids that did graduate from school, four of them have degrees and they're working hard and they're making nice money. Unfortunately, in my days it wasn't that way. In my school, it wasn't that way. So that's it. But uh, the community, the boys' school is one as the girls' school, even if it's a separate entity. The high school, the boys that go to Israel, it's, it's one big community. Mm -hmm. Someone from our community, which is all girls, is in a need, is sick in Israel. They come over here, everybody help. Not everybody, they only help from 1,500 people. One is going to get an apartment, one is going to cook the supper for them, one is going to Everybody's going to help. It's one big community from, as I told you, from when you're born until you. And the funeral can be in the synagogue, mm -hmm. for free, no charge. Okay. Um, and which community did you say? We are girls, we are girls. Okay. I would like to introduce Mr. Schwartz. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, their entire board. My name is Mordechai Schwartz. And, uh, I'm here because I have the most precious, uh, valuable investment in the school, which are my own kids. And this is the same school where my wife graduated, all my sisters, and I'm uh, part of the adult community. I've had the uh, honor to meet uh, Madam Chair some other uh, members at the school uh, last July, July 26, I believe was the day. Um, since then, um, I basically understood uh, where, we, where we're at, and uh, I basically devoted a lot of my time to follow what's happening. Um, I've listened to every single uh, tape available on every hearing. I've attended exec executive sessions and hearing as well, um, and been uh, helping the school implement uh, all the requests on the board. All that I'm here to say today is number one, I want to thank very much the board um, for the consideration and being so uh, considered back in last August. Uh, I believe it was uh, at that time uh, Council uh, Schneckerberg presented a, uh, a, a cure uh, 
for the situation and allow the school uh, to operate on the, on the legal temporary basis until a final cure uh, is reached. This is why we have Adam Rothberg sitting here, because he's part of the city planning uh, rezoning change. Um, I, want, I want to say that from day number one, I believe from when I met the board and on, the school has been extremely, extremely res responsive to every single request that the board has, has mentioned. Um, some, of the, some of it may have been miscommunicated wrong, and that's the reason may, why it may seem that it wasn't complied, but everything was taken serious. Um, and, I'll, and I'll start with it, what was mentioned already by, uh, I believe it was the August, August 2nd hearing where the board has requested that we take all the buses off curbside parking and should be parked off-site. Immediately then, meaning starting September of 2016, we, the school already had rented a, a place and as uh, Mr. Klein mentioned, was paying an annual fee of $72,000. Uh, since since uh, the uh, catering part of the uh, bank report was, on, was only for a temporary basis and we were required to, we were required to um, abide by the TPA rules, which that was also what Mr. Scaduto requested at the August 2nd hearing, um, that we should have uh, the minimum fire guards, the, the fire guards required. And at that time it was said that that's determined uh, depending on the event and depending on how the approval of the TPA will come through, um, that's the amount of fire guards we'll need. I'm proud to say that from that day on, every single event that was held in that school had the amount of fire guards required. And this is also, it's a, it's a costly thing. Four fire guards for the entire thing is a costly thing. Do and you have I, any, any way, I'm sorry to interrupt you, of, of indicating proof of that, like well, to, sign in sheets? To the, minimum, to, the minimum, to the minimum, we got a letter from the security company um, basically certifying um, that what we're saying here is true. And I, believe, I believe that if you'd like to get more information, then mm -hmm. we, can, we can get that. Okay. Because we, from the company, they must have either payroll records or something showing these four fire guards to give us their certification Absolutely. cards. Absolutely. That, that okay. I mean, whatever whatever will be determined and clear instructions given um, to us, we will abide by. Because this is something that we're proud of, something that we have done, something that we have spent a lot of money on, and there's no reason we should hide. And for that same reason, we had no reason to hide from the fire department anything that's happening there because we were, as far as we're concerned to the best of our knowledge we were in compliance at the november hearing mr skaduda got up and uh, basically uh, complained and said that they were never notified in return to that we um, i believe mr klein had sent to mr skaduda on november 27 that email the reports that the fire department visited the site on september 6 specifically states the tpa number so it's not like they randomly came because somebody sent them. They specifically came to inspect for a TPA. And that's what they charged us for. So I believe the total bill was $730, if I remember correctly. Um, and then we, then we also know that every single uh, TPA that we got had a, a copy to the fire department. So when, when Mr. Scaduda gets up there and says, we weren't been notified, obviously there was some kind of miscommunication, that we speak, which again, we have nothing to hide because as far as we're concerned, we're in full compliance as far as fire safety. Well, we uh, still have a question regarding what the notice was sent to the DOB. That's, that, and uh, that has to happen on every event. That Mr. Pinner will, 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 will answer that. Um, so, so, so then this was on the November hearing. On the, in the February uh, 15 hearing, I believe it was a 14, Ms. Mr. Scaduto had no uh, comments regarding any TPA issues with having fire. April 25th comes up and walks up there, and I saw him walk up there, and, and I would be, I would not know the ins and outs of what's happening, I would be furious as well. So all I'm here to say, we are here to comply with whatever request the board requests. Um, you may have some uh, counter and say, well, we said this and this particular, we said so, and, and it took a little bit longer time to comply with. Sometimes when you come out of here, it's not that clear. Um, so if we didn't get the clear guidance, sometimes we need more time to submit. But I'm here basically to tell you to thank you very much for your consideration until now, and tell you that the school is committed to comply with whatever we need to do in order to move forward.
Thank you. Okay. Um, so what we do need is proof that the fire guards have been present at every time. So they and they definitely do because we charge a lot of money. Fire guards um, that they've had people present at all of the events. And then proof that the fire that the Department of Buildings was notified pursuant to the CPA regulations. Do you know who those letters were faxed to? Well, we get a copy of the letters. Do I know who I I sent them to the school. Oh, so, not to the, there's a, the, you're the architect of record, and you're responsible for sending it to the building department, I believe. So we would like to know. Well, who do you know who you sent? I, I did to? not send it to the building. I have the letters, I did the inspections, and I have logs of those inspections, but I did not send those letters directly to, and I keep a record of all my uh, you know, controlled inspections, but I did not send them forwardly to the Department of Buildings. I did on two occasions speak to the fire department, who also attended those inspections, and it was clear to me and clear to them that the event that the space was proper and organized for the event and that would be. But you understand now the difference between this? This is not an inspection where you and fire department go in to check on whether the TPA should be renewed. This is your obligation as the architect of record to go in at every event. And it sounds kind of a extreme, but a TPA permit is actually not for this purpose. Normally TPA permits are for a week or something like that and you do have to go in every single day and check because during the course of the event things get disturbed, tables fall down, the exit gets blocked, all of that kind of thing and that's why you are supposed to be checking every single day because this is not the proper use of a TPA permit but that's what happens when you have an illegal use and the city by the way, is going out of its way to accommodate, which is very hard for me to get my head around as a lawyer, um, your illegal use for however many months this is since we finally discovered on our own that this illegal use was going on for, depends on who does the math, seven years, 10 years, more years than that, okay? So, um, so, for, for Mr. Penner, is that Penner. What that's um, you've taken on sort of a hefty responsibility as the architect of record here because we expect you to comply with the terms of the TPA. And since you have no TPA, which is even harder for me to get my head around, but you continue to have books, I don't know how many events, without the TPA present, either you persuade the Department of Buildings that it's okay to be doing this without a TPA, or you get the TPA and you make these reports every single day. That, that's a significant, uh, let's say, expense and commitment on the part of the architect, because it means you've got essentially a person who spends their day, um, with the exception of maybe Friday um, and Saturday, not going to the site and, and inspecting that it comply, that the exits comply, the lights comply, and everything. That's what you signed up for. And right, the inspection sure. states that it's prior to the event. It doesn't obligate me to be there during the event. No, it's prior to. And so I'm telling you that I was there prior to But the you're event. saying, like, we were there September 1st, and then events <coughs> continued over a three-month period. No, that just, doesn't mean you went every day, every time there was an event. Yes, either myself or someone in my employ, and I'm going to have an inspection there are people too. So if there's an event scheduled for the day, we go there prior to the event and inspect the premises. So what they're saying is, is that, right, those inspection reports as for the CPA were to be forwarded to the building. Yeah, correct. And they would not. So, but I do have the reports, and I can follow up the forwarding on well, I'm not sure if after the fact that might be part of the thinking of the building department in terms of renewing them. 
yes. CPA. Right, that you're not complying, which is probably why the fire department is so upset. So clearly uh, you're not a, complying. That I believe is an incorrect assumption based on my conversation with the buildings department and telling me that their own building inspectors have been at the premises on many occasions and have always found it to be a safe location. Their yeah. reasoning for not renewing our third request for the temporary PA was not clear to any of us, but we do know that it was denied. But it was approved by the plans examiner, the senior plans examiner at the buildings department, but it has to be signed off by the borough commissioner, and it was not at the third one. Correct. Meeting. Which means you don't no have explanation. One. There. But it means you don't have one. It's pretty simple. No, that's true. I, I don't know. Don't know. I, I can, All right. I'm not this great. So here's the thing. This board has put us in a very, very unpleasant position of trying to decide whether we should actually, the purpose of this hearing, so that the administrators and everybody else at the school understand this, is this is a compliance hearing. Because we learn through, frankly, no help of your rep representatives that this illegal use has been going on for years, right? Without the board being informed of the illegal use. Um, and so we hold compliance hearings to decide whether the the variance or whatever approval it is we granted should be revoked because the building is not in compliance with the terms of the grant. So we have two buildings that were granted for a school, neither of which are being used entirely legally. So like say during the day, I guess they're being used as a school, that much I have to assume because I know that there, I saw children, so I assume they actually go to school there. Um, but in the evening, it's being used illegally and so we could easily say here you're not in compliance you have 30 days to make it in compliance that's the end right puts you out of business until you figure this out with city planning we're instead being put in this very uncomfortable position um, by the forces that may right to try to accommodate this illegal use, which I keep repeating, I need it on the record, we identify the use as illegal, and to try to make it not dangerous, right? So, again, Mr. Pinner, I'm really sorry, I'm an architect, I wouldn't want to be in your place, right? But in order for them to comply, you have to comply with the terms of this TPA, which is expired, but it has specific terms, and you must, every day, that there is an event. Every day there's an event. So they have the little checks on the chart on the map. Send someone from your office who makes an inspection of a list of things that you as the architect of record decide need to be inspected. And that inspection report must be submitted to the Department of Buildings. Okay? And if it's not, and actually, as long as we're at it, it should put Mr. Gluckman to be the one, okay? So, Commissioner got left in and as long as you're at it to clear up things, CC Mr. Scaduto so it's clear that you have submitted every day, okay? This will go on for a long time because if, if indeed the City Planning Commission chooses to resume this to legalize um, the use by creating a commercial overlay, which means it's commercial use, um, this is going to take a while. And so your commitment is long, right? Yes. Okay. And then the next part is, so we need, and if you have log reports of the times that you've inspected, send us the log reports, and, and also, uh, which we'll forward to the fire department. Okay? And then the, what did we have? There was one other one that, um, you needed the guards, the proof that the guards, guards were present. Um, with their sort of clock in log information. Um, okay, and then we need immediately a solution on the parking lot. For the valet. A solution for the valet parking. We need that immediately. So make a fast deal in the neighborhood. Yeah. 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 Yes, good point. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I just want to complete a thought that um, Ms. Monroe suggested. So, um, 
if I were in Mr. Pinner's place, I might not want this job. If there is, if you choose to, you know, move on and decide to pursue other other work, there, the, the superseding architect needs to follow the same protocol. So again, I'm saying that to the administrators um, that you must make sure that your architect every single day that there's an event files something with, files the report of inspection with the Department of Buildings and CCs the fire department, whether it's Mr. Um, Pinner or a superseding architect. Okay. Um, I just wanted to put my parents on Hillary Schultz, um, attorney representing the class here today um, for they have reported to the LLC, the neighbor who has this person. Just that you're present. You yes. Don't want to add. But actually, just to fill this in so that the record understands that your client has appeared here several times complaining about the parking and the trash, um, and in general about how in the world can this use be going on was not even allowed. It's a very good question. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, we're here to monitor the situation with the peers that obviously the board is um, trying to address the situation. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I just I want to thank everybody. My name is Danny Carlson. I'm chief of staff at the Greenfield. We represent hundreds of the families who are part of the congregation and then the children attend the school of those who have been married to those. And um, you know, we really play a central role in the community life of probably at least two thousand of our constituents. So we really appreciate all of the time and attention and resources that the board as an institution has devoted to the applicant. Um, we appreciate that well, all of these key issues that exist in our community of trash you know, the parking issues, and we know that as we continue to grow, that we will continue to face them. We appreciate we're sort of bearing with everybody and, and, and working through them. But we just wanted to thank you. Thanks for your opportunity. Anybody else want to add anything? Any commissioners? Open questions? Comments? Just a move. Minor correction, this is from Mr. Pinner. Uh, when you do submit the plans next time, um, just make sure these are there are 10 tables, uh, 10 chairs to a table, not 12. Are these 12 tops or 10 seats? For the 600 seat, it's uh, 12, 12, which is what would be needed for the school. Oh, okay. Yes, but I think uh, in, the, in the process of correcting it, that just um, yeah. it must have may have been just an oversight. So yeah. That's the template. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the yeah. template. Yes. And the occupancy actually includes the staff. Yes. Right? Everyone so the number of that? people yeah. who can be seated should actually be less. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is an important point because since my important source of information is the internet, um, when you go on and you're looking for a nice place to rent for your wedding, it says 400 to 500 people. Um, oh, it also said 180 couples minimum. So that does allow room for staff, but that's the minimum, right? So we've learned that the TPA, it's, or any public assembly permit includes all staff, so that's your servers, your bed, your photographers, everybody, everybody. Kitchen staff. Kitchen staff, all that stuff. So when you're calculating who's coming, if 400 is the wrong number, um, please let us know. <laughs> that's my only complaint against the catering, that they require that I'm wrong today. I, the maximum I have is 100 couples, but they do pack me up the rest of the food, and I take it home for supper. <laughs> 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 I mean, seriously. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I, I have actually one question just to clarify for this this calendar. Is this, I know this is through May, March 2018. Is this subject to, are you going to add more events? Is, is it possible that more events to be added in the interim? Or is this kind of set? If they are added, we'll advise you. Okay, thank you. I mean, in other words, the caterer will watch out. Well, if you can Sorry. pass the message around. Yeah, no, 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 but and, and to that point, um, uh, I'm just curious whether the school's even a little bit concerned that um, maybe you don't get to continue with this operation, right? It's depending on effectively legalization by city planning. What if city planning ultimately decides that you can't have this thing, right? 
So then in that position, if I was owning a business where I'm promising lots and lots of couples into 2019, that sure you can have your wedding here, wouldn't I be a little apprehensive that maybe the event's going to take, can't take place? And then you've given a deposit that you're going to have to refund, and it looks really bad. It's bad for your reputation, and so on. So I tread carefully about forward, you know, forward booking into 20 already, or almost 2019, right? So that's business, right? It's reality of business and the expectation of the business. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Do you want to add it? Uh, do we want to talk about uh, next time? Yeah. Oh, right, right. So the next time is not going to be a long time because you don't need a long time to accomplish this, right? You're going to provide us with the records you already have. You're going to provide us, the architect will provide us on a day-by-day -day basis. When did the event start again? 14th. The 14th. And so, Sunday. Sunday. Okay, so start. events are starting again. So the architect will provide us with his inspection information um, uh, we'll get the fire the but you want us to send it to DOB and you yes we also yes yeah, sorry so DOB fire department and us right? you send it to my attention okay um, and so we want from going from the May what is it May 14th May 14th forward until our next hearing yes. we want all of those reports from the architect we want the fire departments, I mean, for your, your fire, fire inspection guards. companies' um, records all the way up until that point. Okay. Right. And is it, and just, you mentioned the 14th, is it useful to differ, and I think this is to be fair to the, to the or is it useful to differentiate between, I mean, because May 14th could be a Mother's Day event for the for the students. Like, we don't, we don't know. And, we don't and, and, and that could be under their current PA, yeah. Sort of a, a permissible use, it's accessory, right. obviously. It's so, <laughs> drilling down what into thought, this yeah. a little bit more to mm -hmm. so that, that we can understand which is school event and which, which, is is school events and which are not would be very helpful, I think. Mm -hmm. Just because the, the, the school events, right? Take them off, we clear, should, right? Yeah, yeah. School events means school events, children from the school. Yeah, yeah. Parents of the children really? and those children yeah, yeah. doing stuff together. Sure. If there is right. a fundraising going on for the school purposes, that's a school event as a right? Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just wanting to clarify. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think right. Should. If that any of that is actually occurring, we yeah, we should know. So, that, right? so yeah, okay, I think that's I'll fair. Uh, okay. I would just in terms of timing, I don't know how quickly you want them back, but just but based on our schedule. What's our schedule to last for? July? July 18th? Sure. Yes. July yeah, we can do it. Yeah. So July 18th? July 18th. And then do you want a submission June 28th? Yeah. Sure. June 28th. Okay, so submission June 28th, and it's a July 18th continuation on this discussion. I expect there to be a parking, a parking spot secured, and a copy of the lease, and a picture of the parking lot. Okay? Not to mention where it is on the map. <laughs> How far away from the site. And that it's legal parking. And that it's legal wow. parking. I will get to to reach. <laughs> yes. I just said the parking. <laughs> okay. Thank you all Thank for you coming. Um, this is the last little word of please. Please, one of the people, one of the administrators, come to this next hearing. Um, perhaps standing next to your legal representative, and when you hear an un, let's say, an incorrect statement being made, correct it. Can okay. you stand in front of it? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can even see me instead. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.